Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Clean Coder Coding Channel. So today we are going to do a lead code easy problem. Problem number uh, 344, uh, reverse string. Okay, so by the problem name, the problem is actually self-explanatory. What we are given is we are given a care array. And what we are supposed to do is return the reverse of this care array. Okay, so this is the care array given to us and we want to reverse it. So let's uh, see the constraint of the problem. So the string length could be up to 10 to the power 5. Okay. And uh, each character would be a valid SKI character. So these are the constraints. Fine. And uh, okay. So let's uh, start. Uh, let's start uh, root forcing this question. So how would we reverse a string? How would we reverse a carrier? So if this carrier is given to us, it would be like this. Okay. H E L L O. What we can do is we can make another array of same size and uh, we can start a pointer from the end of this uh, original array and uh, another pointer from the start of this new array and one by one we can put all the characters at the corresponding position. Okay, likewise. So let's do complexity analysis of this solution. So the time complexity of this solution would be O of n because uh, we'll be doing a single traversal of the original character array. And space complexity of the solution would be also O of n because we are using extra space. So at this position, assume that uh, the interview tells, interviewer tells you that uh, uh, you can't use the extra space. So you need to think about a solution where extra space is not used. So what you would do in that case? So it's also written in the follow-up that do not allocate extra space for another array. Okay, you must do this by modifying the input array in place of n extra hundred. Okay, so at this position, uh, you need to eliminate the extra space used. So what you can do is uh, in the original array. So you can start a pointer from the beginning and another pointer from the ending. What you can do is swap each position till the previous pointer is behind the next pointer. Okay, so what would happen is, so when you would swap O with H, this would happen and our pointers would move one step forward each. So they'll be pointing here. So now this would also get swapped. L and E. Okay, so our pointer would move forward. So both the pointers will be pointing to this index now. So at this position, uh, we can uh, leave the array as it is. And uh, yes, our array has got reversed. So let's uh, try to write code for this approach. How uh, we are going to code this solution? Uh, let's see. So It's pretty straightforward and simple to code the solution actually. So, in this function, I'll write, I'll take two pointers. One would be i, which would be starting from 0. And another pointer I'll take is j, which would be starting from end. Okay, so now I'll do something like this. While my i pointer is less than j, I'll swap the contents of these two pointers continuously and move these pointers forward. So, yeah, t is equals to s of uh, i. Okay, so this is the simple swapping logic which I'm using. s of i is s of j, and s of j is uh, t. Okay, so now what we'll do is uh, we'll increment the i pointer forward and j pointer backward okay so this way uh, this could be coded let's uh, discuss the time complexity trade-off of the solution now so the time complexity is pretty straightforward for the solution it's uh, o of n because i'm doing a single traversal of the array 
something like uh, two-pointed approach. So time complexity is over n, and space complexity is uh, over one because we are not using any other extra space. So let's uh, code this solution in in lead code to check whether our solution is getting accepted or not. Okay. So let me open my browser. So that's pretty much what we would code. So let's try to submit our solution. Yeah, it is getting accepted. So if you are asked this question in an interview, what you can do is that uh, you can make your solution even more impressive. By impressive, what I mean is that you can also tell it interviewer that you can also code this solution recursively. So recursively, how you would code, let's uh, see. The recursive solution is actually very similar to this iterative one. So what we do is, Okay, so what we would do is uh, we are going to take two pointers again. Okay, so we are going to take two pointers. Initially, both would be at this first starting index only. So what what we will do is we will call a function of recursively, and in each recursive call, this pointer would move one step forward. Okay till the end of the string is reached. Okay, so this way recursive calls would be there. Okay, and so on. Okay, so once this pointer reaches end, here, what we will do is, uh, we'll start to increment this pointer and swapping the contents of these two pointers. Like what we'll do is we'll increment this pointer only by reference. So when uh, the recursive calls would return from their calling function to the calling function, uh, this pointer would get increment. So what I'll do is I'll swap the content of these two pointers. So by recursion, this pointer would automatically return to this position and I'll increment this position since it's passed by reference. So what would happen? The contents would be uh, reversed, but here's a catch. Should I continue this to the end of this array or should I stop in between? What okay, you need to tell in the comments? I'll wait till you answer in the comments. Fine, uh, I was just joking. Actually, if you proceed till the end of this string, what would happen is this string would get reversed again. So you will get the original string. So what we need to do is we need to stop in the middle. We need to stop in the middle so that uh, the string is reversed when, when both the pointers reach middle. So we need to stop there and uh, that condition we need to add in our recursive function. So let's uh, see how we are going to write our recursive function. Let me erase all this mess. Okay, so I'll write here an uh, aux function. I'll call here an aux function. Okay, aux. And what parameters it would have? It would have a string array, an empty array of one element which would act as a pass by reference and which would not change in the recursive calls. So I can do something like new int zero. Okay. So it, it would pass an array, it would pass an array of single element with zero as its contact. And the third parameter would be uh, i which would be zero. So let me code this function now. Okay, white aux array string int array start and another parameter would be i okay so this will be the parameter then let's write the code of the body so in recursion uh, let's uh, 
writes first the function calling this function recursively. So, ox, let's write something here. Ox uh, string start is array, so it will be as it is, and i plus one. I am incrementing i in each recursive call. So now I need to terminate this recursion. So I need to write a base condition of recursion. Let's write that in bracket. So if i is double equal to str dot length, I can return. Okay. So this is my base condition, and this is my recursive call. Let's write our swap swapping uh, algo. Uh, like when the recursion would hit base condition, it would start returning to the callers. What we need to do then? We need to swap the contents of. Uh, we need to swap the contents of i pointer with uh, the start array pointer. So let's write that swap swapping logic here. So char equals to str of. Now start is an array, so I want to. I need to do something like this. Okay. Okay, so this way our swapping code is complete. And let's increment our start point and one and I pointer will be decremented by recursive code. Of zero plus is equals to one. So here is a catch now. So if you would execute this code in compiler, what would happen is you will get the original string only. Remember, I told you the problem like the recursion is reversing the reverse string again while coming back. So to get rid of that problem, we can add a base condition here as if start of zero is greater than or equal to i. Please return. Okay. So in this base condition, uh, the function won't uh, return. Like function would return automatically when the complete string is reversed, so that we don't complete the reverse on reversed string again. So that's pretty much the recursive solution. Let's discuss the time complexity trade-off of the solution now. So the time complexity of this recursive solution is quite straightforward. It is O of n, since we are doing a single parse. And the space complexity of this recursive solution is uh, also often because uh, stack takes space. So yeah, that's pretty much about the recursive solution. Now let's quickly code uh, this solution in our lead code uh, problem solver. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Let's uh, write, we have completed writing this code, let's execute this code once. Yeah, it seems to have been accepted. Let's submit this. Yeah, oh, accepted. So if you liked this uh, video, please uh, like this video and please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. So thanks a lot for watching.